ESPN Golden when we see Giorno use the arrow to become Golden Experience record round, which is probably one of the most OP stands we have seen. Requiem. And we know Diavolo could have and would have won if it wasn't thanks to Bruno figuring out how to defeat Silver Chair Requiem. Shortly after Bruno defeats Silver Chair, he says goodbye to Giorno and the arrow gets placed in Giorno's hands. And Giorno becomes the most OP stand we have ever seen. Golden Experience Requiem, which grants the user the power to nullify and convert any attack to zero. Even an incredible stand as King Crimson couldn't even stand a chance. Epitaph grants Diavolo the ability to see 10 seconds into the future, which is the perfect combination to his time skip, allowing Dio to skip or erase 10 seconds into the future, which in my opinion is probably the most busted combination a stand could ever have. But let's rewind a bit. What if Giorno never received the arrow, and instead of becoming Requiem, an ally shows up, and that ally is Jotaro Kujo. In today's video, we're going to be talking about what if Jotaro went to Italy, and more importantly, what if Jotaro star platinum fought against King Crimson? Time stop or is it time skip? Who would prevail? Jotaro or Diavolo? Jotaro in Stardust Crusade had the ability to stop time for 10 seconds, the same limit as Diavolo time erase. So does this mean the two stands cancel out each other, or is it worth actually their time stop or time erase for first? We know Diavolo has the power to erase and see 10 seconds to the future, but if not process of erasure, he cannot attack the opponent. He can only watch and evade attacks. Diavolo demonstrates this by using his time skip against Bruno, positioning himself behind Bruno, and then going in for the attack. But really, how strong is King Crimson? They never tell us per se how strong King Crimson actually is, but going off his fights against Bruno and the rest of the game, King Crimson can easily put a donut in you or slice you up if he catches you off guard. But how does it stack up against Jotaro Star Platinum? And I'm going to be honest with you guys, this fight is only complicated if you make it complicated. Huh? Let me explain. It's true that Diavolo possesses an immense strength, being able to slice Bruno while also putting a large donut in him. But what about speed? The only feat we can compare Diavolo's speed to is when he fought against Polaroid. And even then, it's still hard to see how fast King Crimson is, simply due to the fact that Diavolo's go-to move is simply predict the fuser, erase it, get behind the opponent, either slice him or donut the opponent. So could Diavolo predict Jotaro's time skip and erase that time and appear behind him? And to be honest, I don't see how that wouldn't work. Diavolo's ability epitaph could see when Jotaro's about to activate the world and freeze time. So in theory, Diavolo could erase that set time and appear behind Jotaro. Prison knew Jotaro like Akaza did Red Goku, but that would only work if he fought part six Jotaro, which was heavily, heavily nerfed. And that's being generous, because part six Jotaro was one, heavily nerfed, and two, at a major disadvantage when facing Father Pussy. And at the end of Stone Ocean, Father Pussy literally says, Jotaro was only two steps behind. And if you think about it, Jotaro was only two steps behind an incredible overpowered Pussy, which literally counters his stand. And let's be honest, if Jolene wasn't there, or if Jotaro was, was tough enough to sacrifice his daughter, he could have ended Pussy right then and there. But we're not talking about part six Jotaro versus Diabalo. We're talking about Diamond's Unbreakable Jotaro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Jotaro went to Morio to visit Josuke, and at that time, Polnareff was fighting against King Crimson. But if you guys have been enjoying this video so far and want to see more of what it fights, don't forget to like subscribe, let's get back to the video. Looking at Jotaro's stats, he's overpowering King Crimson to the point where I just don't see how this is even a debate. Jotaro in part 3 took on and defeated a buff Dio. Not only did Jotaro beat Dio, Jotaro also tanked an attack from Dio that would normally kill a regular person. Not to mention, he was going toe to toe in terms of speed to the point where they started levitating off the ground. Not to mention, Star Platinum was keeping up with Pornap while he had a buff from Anubis. Even if Diavolo somehow managed to get behind Jotaro by using his ability first, Star Platinum could easily dodge or counter this attack. And a great example of this is in part 4, when Kira was about to strike Jotaro from behind, and right before he did, Star Platinum came out this a second before Kira could end Jotaro. So in terms of speed, I might have to give that to Jotaro, just because it's quoted, Star Platinum is or faster than the speed of light. Now, when it comes down to strength, Jotaro rarely ever goes out when fighting his opponent. But when he does, it's a different story. In the Jotaro vs. Dio fight, Jotaro finally went all out this fight. And at one point, he tricks Dio and donuts him right through the torso. Not only did Jotaro rival Dio and donut him, he also cracked Dio's skull later on in the fight. And the way Jotaro defeats Dio by punching the weaker side of Dio and making him explode is a massive strength feat. Mind you, this is Dio after he drank Joseph's blood, gaining a massive buff. And when fighting Killer Queen sub ability, sheer heart attack, Jotaro makes one fatal mistake. And that's being too close to the fire, almost causing him his life. Kira goes on to tell Jotaro he should have stayed laying down because he can almost see through him. That statement alone goes to show how durable Jotaro is. He has multiple sized donut like holes in his body where he can almost see through him. And he was still able to overpower Kira and kill the queen. And not to mention what I said earlier when Jotaro survived multiple attacks from Dio. Accompanying that with Jotaro surviving sheer heart attack, it's safe to say Jotaro would be able to defeat Diavolo's King Crimson low to mid diff. I just don't see 
King Crimson be able to sneak Jotaro in a 1v1. Even if you want to give the strength to this King Crimson, Star Platinum just outranks Diabolo's King Crimson when it comes to speed and durability. Like I said before, Star Platinum kept up with an already buffed Dio and won. Jotaro when going all out kept up with a Polnareff with an Anubis buff. And a heavily, heavily nerfed and weakened Jotaro was only two steps behind a Father Pussy in an already disadvantaged environment. Let's just say for shits and giggles, Diabolo manages to donate Jotaro. You don't think Jotaro could survive that? Even after showing immense power and strength after sheer heart attack blew him up, it left him with similar holes in his body? Listen, Diabolo's King Crimson is a powerful stand with his ability to erase time and his secondary ability, Epitaph, which grants the use of 10 seconds future sight. It's a, it's a powerful stand, but when you stack it up against something like Star Platinum or the world, I just don't see a way he can kill Jotaro without Star Platinum turning before the attack happens. I'm not saying it's impossible for Diabolo to erase time, stand behind Jotaro, and donate him. I'm just saying, looking at Jotaro's feet, Star Platinum is just too fast, even if Diabolo got behind him. Jotaro's of durability is crazy. Him surviving sheer heart attack, him surviving the blows he endured in the deal fight. And don't forget Jotaro's one true ability. Even if Diavalo got the upper hand, Jotaro just had to say those 10 words and it's over with. Sorry Diavalo fans, but Jotaro and Star Platinum beats King Crimson. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment on what stand users you want to see go at it next. My name is Kinate and I'll see you guys in the next video.